Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Classic Restos. Major sponsors are important. Classic Restos proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance and Penrite Oil. And no matter what the vehicle, you can have it insured with Shannon's. In fact, why not get your home and contents and bundle it all together and receive a multi-policy discount? You can also sign up to become a member of the Shannon's Club where it truly is your garage. At a time to suit yourself, why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And in the meantime, find out more when you visit Shannon's online at shannons.com.au. And don't forget the Shannon's Club. It truly is your garage. And when it comes time for the finest in oils, coolants, fuel additives and so much more, you simply cannot go past Penrite as they are the best in the business. And it's easy to see why. They're Australian made, Australian owned, have been established since 1926 and no matter what your application, they have a product to suit your requirements. Find out more via the Penrite Technical Assistance Team there to help us seven days a week at penriteoil.com.au. Oil right, use Penrite, simply a better class of oil. And on today's show, it's a return to Corowa, New South Wales, Australia, on the banks of the beautiful Murray River for the 36th annual GPA Swim-In and Military Vehicle Gathering. Now, you may not know, but the Swim-In originates from the amphibious vehicles that turn up to this special event. Corowa is on one side of the Murray River and just 100 metres across is Waganya in Victoria. These two gorgeous towns joined by the John Ford Bridge built around 1860. This year's event is extra special. Each year there is a different themed emphasis. 2015 is the emergency vehicle and General Motors made products. The Corowa swim-in is spread across seven big days, Monday through to Sunday. On the Wednesday this year, the Albury RSL sub-branch were kind enough to invite ex-military vehicles to an escorted convoy through the town, showcasing our respect for past and present military personnel. Regional bushfire burn-offs has given us this smoky shot looking over Albury from the War Memorial Tower. There is just so much to see and do at every coral we swim in, and a 30-page program outlines exactly that. If you're quick enough to grab some accommodation, the Ballpark Caravan Park is the hub of the event. Now, if you're watching from overseas, this glorious backdrop behind me is the Murray River. And as I alluded to earlier, it's the border between New South Wales and Victoria, the location for today's episode. With me now, I have Richard Farrand. How are you, Richard? Very good, Fletch. Thanks very much. That's good. And I would like to say, too, that this event is so popular that, Richard, you've come out from the United Kingdom. Uh, how many years have you been coming out? Well, the first time I came in, it was 1996, but this is my ninth visit to Kiowa. That's amazing. I'm not a stupid question, but obviously you love the place, right? Oh, yeah, and the atmosphere and all the people. I've got friends here, and they often come, come to England as well, or France, and we meet up, so it's, it's got a real friendly atmosphere. Richard, you've got something uh, very unique behind us here. I've got to say it's probably one of the most uh, unattractive things I've ever had on Classic Restos. It's a big steel box. Now, it's from 1942. What is it? Yeah, well, it's part of a radar system that was built by the Canadians. It was the first anti-aircraft radar system that the Commonwealth had. It was designed in Britain, but because of manufacturing problems with the war and so forth, the Canadians actually produced them first. And they produced uh, about, around about 600 sets. The majority went to UK for, for uh, protection against anti-aircraft, enemy aircraft. Uh, and then a certain amount came to Australia. I can't remember the figure and they, they were set up in what they called convoys and there was two trailers, two, two different trailers uh, towed by two FWD trucks plus a, a Chevrolet Blitz truck for all the bits and pieces and this particular one is what's called the zone position indicator 
and they had a radar s scanner on top and a lot of equipment inside but that's all gone now but we found I actually spotted it at a place up in the Blue Mountains a few years ago and f saw the potential and when it turned out that the guy who owned it, when he found what we wanted it for, he's, he donated it to us. I can't think of a, of, a, of a better vehicle to start today's episode. I just think it's brilliant. Richard, thank you so much, mate, for sharing this information with us. And on behalf of everybody here as well, mate, welcome to Corowa, New South Wales, Australia. Good on you. Thanks. Thanks very much, Fletch. Good. Time for Andy now with his 1940 Chev. How are you, Andy? I'm well, Fletch. Yourself? Good, thank you. Thanks for uh, making the trip. Have you travelled far? From uh, lovely Bondi in Sydney. Well, and, you, and you did it in the old girl, eh? Took me, uh, took me eight hours, but um, and I did uh, 392 miles yester on. yesterday. And how did it run? Like a clock. Now, I picked on you because I love the uniqueness of this vehicle as well. The mobile cinema unit. Now, tell us, what was the purpose of this vehicle in military times? Uh, they used to have a um, little generator and a 16mm projector um, in them and a uh, stack of old movies, obviously, and they used to travel around the army camps and uh, show them uh, movies. I did this up in 1995 to go to the uh, back to the track reunion and um, I was going to make an ambulance out of it but there was about three ambulances going. Anyway one of the club members um, showed me a wartime photo of a vehicle very very similar and uh, I just happened to be working at uh, Botany at the time and there was an old sign writer Bob Ellison and I said can you do something with this Bob and he said uh, yeah leave it with us bring it round tomorrow. Anyway he did both sides by hand. That's amazing. Now, Andy, tell us about the truck in terms of what it's like to drive. I mean, I know it's 1940, fairly archaic, but obviously it's comfortable enough for you to do your eight-hour trip in it. Yeah, yeah, well, it does that all right, out in the open road. Round town in the, you know, stop-start traffic, she's a bit of a handful, of course. Could what? The old three on the tree, but... Um, what powers it up front? Um, well, <laughs> I've got to be honest, I cheated. I put a later model motor in it. Oh. I put it, it's a still a Chev motor, but yeah. it's a uh, what they call a blue flame motor. Oh yeah, and yeah, it's that came that there. Yeah, the blue flame six they uh, came out of the early Corvettes as well. Uh, they did, that's true, and uh, they were the first of the full pressure mains and. Um, uh, from the old original old splash fed motor. Andy, just want to thank you, mate. Thanks for making the trip and bringing such a... Oh, I love it. It's such a, a unique vehicle. Well done, mate. Thank you very much, Fletch. Nice to be on Loop Show. My pleasure. OK. When it comes time for the best in classic vehicle home and contents insurance, you can't go past Shannon's. In fact, why not get your home and contents, bundle it all together with your classic bike, truck or car and receive a multi-policy discount. Find out more information when you pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a chat on 134646. And don't forget to sign up to become a member of the Shannon's Club, where it truly is your garage. Find out more at shannons.com.au. And it goes without saying that Penrite is the best in the business when it comes time for oils, coolants and fuel additives. They're Australian made, Australian owned and they've been established since 1926. The Penrite Technical Assistance Team is there to help us seven days a week. Find out more when you visit Penrite online at penriteoil.com.au. Oil right, use Penrite, simply a better class of oil. You're watching the 2015 Corowa Military Swim-In, exclusive to Classic Restos. Back with more after this. Moving on through the 2015, the military gathering here in beautiful Corowa, New South Wales. Time for Hugh. How are you, Hugh? Pretty good today. Yep. Mm. That's good. You're here with your 1940 Ford V8. Doesn't it sound beautiful? A Blitz ambulance. How rare is this, Hugh? There's still a few around, but a lot got cut up and made into cranes. Cut up and made into cranes. Yeah. Well, I guess that'd give the driver a bit of a lift, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Before we go any further as well, without sounding too personal, what year were you born? 1935. So you're coming up to 80? Yes. Isn't that, that's not so bad because look at you, I mean look, you, you, you're in the, to the fraternity, you've got your classic blitz here, I just think it's so special, I really do. Now how long have you had this vehicle? 1961 when I bought it. You've had it since 1961? Yes. You must know every nut and bolt to this, Hugh. Working on the motor and that we did. <laughs> wow. 
Right. Was there any time from 1961, like how, how long was it off the road during the build? About uh, seven years. Yeah. Now, Hugh, the Ford V8, does it do a good job in the ambulance? Well, we get there, but it's a bit slow, that's all. And 30, 35 mile an hour, that's it. If you go a bit harder, you're thrashing the motor along. Yeah. You get it even, you think, well, it's stayed about 30 on. Yeah, you just keep it on its sweet spot. Yeah. yeah. Now, Hugh, what sort of condition was the ambulance in when you got it? Much the same as it is now. So it's always been a fairly respectable thing. Yeah. The chap was going to, that had it, he was going to cut it up and make it into another crane. He's got six of them that he's done over the years. Yeah. Still a few working of them. Everything goes back to the crane, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Uh, look, I just think it's so good that you've uh, got this ambulance. As I said, it's such a unique vehicle and it's so nicely done too. I mean, your decals, the paintwork. Uh, I know you love it. It's been a big part of your life, hasn't it? Oh, yes. Hugh, we move around to the back of the ambulance. Hugh opens the doors, and I don't actually what's going on here. I don't know if it's a bit of a, a, a kinky thing that you've got going on here or what, Hugh, but uh, a bit of bondage going on. But there's a bit of rope work there with some poor person. You've got them tied up up there. What's going on there, Hugh? In case she rolls off her bed. Yeah. <laughs> the stretcher. <laughs> this is what you do with your people. You rope them in, right? <laughs> How authentic is this? We have the nurse that's all bound with rope on the upper level and we've got the patient down on the lower level, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, how cool. I, I just think that's extra cool. I mean, opening up the doors of Hughes Ambulance, you're just never too sure what you're going to see inside. <laughs> you're only like around your 30s when you got this. Oh, I didn't think that far back. <laughs> all right, thanks for being on today's show, Hugh. Yeah. Hello, thank you, Fletch. That's all right. See you after that. Good on you, mate, and, and thanks for helping to keep the tradition alive because I think, no, I, yeah, you're doing a good job. Well done. Oh, right, thank you. You cannot say that Classic Restos is not the TV show that brings you more. <laughs> We've got an authentic nurse on today's show <laughs> in the back here. <laughs> I still, I still don't know how she got roped into that. <laughs>Time for Graham. How are you, Graham? Good morning, Fletch. How are you? Mate, good. 2015, the emphasis on the General Motors products this yeah. year. You've brought along an ambulance, a second ambulance. Now, before we go any further as well with this one, uh, this one's got no bodies, no uh, nurses bound with rope in the back. No, is it? unfortunately, we didn't, couldn't get the right era for that one. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Now, Graham, on a serious note, you have worked tirelessly to get this vehicle here to this event for 2015 Swim In. Uh, it also means a lot to you emotionally, and we'll go there in a second. But before we go there, your build time. Tell us uh, how much urgency and pressure was on you to get this ready for the event. It was an amazing thing because around about June, July, I said, well, geez, we've got to get this thing ready for the 2015. I had a fellow organised to help me, um, but it all fell through. And um, finally, a really good mate of mine said, mate, you're not going to get there. And he started working on the rear doors in uh, early, early December. And then when he came out and started to fit the doors, he said, mate, it hadn't started yet. Uh, you'd better get going. And I said, yeah, mate, I'm at... Your mercy now. Al Martin really, really kicked in and he, he's given his holidays, he's, he's everything to help me. And there's a good mate, um, another one, um, young Jobson, Craig Jobson, um, Laurie and my wife. My wife was the best support ever and she was a treasurer too and the go-getter and well, I couldn't, in fact I used the, the, uh, one tank of petrol. The Minister of War and Finance, <laughs> not necessarily in that order. So really though, in the last 72 hours, that's when the pressure was on to get this vehicle ready. I think it's a real cool jigger. I think it looks really good. And what has impressed me, when you stand at the front of this truck and you see how the, the cab opens up, how wide the thing is. Yeah, Fletch, it's a very unusual thing to accommodate the width of the, the van. They widen the doors and... And uh, later, in 46, 47, they actually used it as a, a furniture van for these old fellas, just to get the width in them. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a design thing. It's extra special when a gentleman such as Graham turns up with a vehicle like this and the first thing you can smell is the fresh paint. I mean, that's how, that's how new we're talking here in terms of getting this thing on the road. Now, the name on the side, 
tell us and share with us the meaning there. Um, during, during the process of building it, um, my mum passed away from lymphoma cancer and I was, thought it was a fitting tribute to name the vehicle after mum. And therein the name was Enid, Enid May. So it was a big thing and I think, she, I think she'd be <laughs> loving it anyway. That's a lovely touch, mate. That's a lovely touch. It yep. really is. Um, and on ending, I guess, in the interview too, uh, the vehicle meaning so much to you, the way that you've detailed it out in the back section too. I mean, um, it, you've really put a lot of thought and effort into it, this. Well, we were at loss, really, because until we got onto a couple of photos. Uh, a young fellow up the road from me, Gary Regeville, he did some of the cab work in there. He, he had time to spend on actually searching and in only the last three or four weeks we got one photo that showed virtually exactly the detail we're after and uh, we even took measurements with vernier calipers and did the conversions on known sizes like the steering wheel and the back steps things like that just to get the sizes it was amazing graham it's a classic resto at its very best mate thank you for bringing it along thank you very much fletch and it's a pleasure to been with you and thank you that's all right you're welcome thank you All right, with me now, the Secretary and Public Relations Officer of KVE. We have Jan Thompson. How are you, Jan? Oh, great, Fletch. Thanks for coming down again this year. That's right. This is the third time now for Classic Restos. Correct. Now, Jan, what an event. Uh, one of the, well, the biggest military gatherings in Australia. Something that's uh, quite an accolade to yourself and your team uh, to be very proud of. Yes. No, this is the 36th year. Um, year of the General Motors and Year of the Emergency Vehicle and we've got a huge number of vehicles here this year. Now one great thing about this event is that there is spotlight emphasis each year on something different. Now for example 2016, what can we expect to see here? Uh, next year we've got uh, Year of the Chrysler and Year of the Tank. Um, behind me there is an example of the tank and there's plenty of Chryslers around as well. You're watching this and thinking I want to see this for the first time in 2016, or how do I get in touch? So, a couple of ways of contacting you guys. What are the details there, Jane? We've got a website, Corowa Swim In. So, C O R O W A S W I M I N dot org. Facebook? Facebook, Corowa Swim In. Now, Jenny, in ending, your choice of town here, Corowa, on the beautiful Murray River, separating Victoria from New South Wales, and it's 36th year. Now, what does that tell you about the quality of an event? Well done. Yes, well, it's the ideal location. I've been here 34 out of 36 years, and we could not beat the location. <laughs> Good on you, Jan. Well done. Thank you, Fletch. You know, there is just so much more that you will receive on a Fletch tour. Have a look at this. You deserve a Fletch tour. See the amazing Ford, GM and Chrysler Nationals at Carlisle events along with museums and private collections in beautiful Pennsylvania, USA. Then it's the Motown city of Detroit and its region taking in more die-hard stuff with incredible history. Rounding off with the Woodward Dream Cruise, the largest moving car cruise in the world. One of the best things about a Fletch tour is you're really looked after. It's something I've always wanted to do. Very well organised. Um, the tour company that put it together was great. Go to classicrestos.com.au and click on the Fletch Tours icon for more information. Hope you're enjoying today's show. Back with more after this. Moving through, lucky enough to have this guy now. His name's John Belfield. How are you, John? Oh, I'm... I'm a I'm great, thanks, Fletch. That's good. Now, before we start, I just want to I just want to mention the fact that John went down in history as well one of Australia's oldest hoons. Now, when John was 78 years of age, he was booked for speeding in a big way, and it just goes to show even a 78 year old guy that's been driving for many many years, it just doesn't pay to speed. Now, John, you're 83 now. When you were booked, when you were 78, how many points did you lose, and what did it cost? you oh yeah it yeah it was a uh, it was a difficult time yeah they uh, it cost me about twelve hundred dollars uh, uh, 12 months suspension of the license which 
you know, for me that was dreadful. And uh, another 12 months uh, for uh, uh, probation and uh, the solicitor cost five grand. It was a very expensive episode. Uh, you're on a long straight piece of country road, minding your own business and it had to happen to him but it just goes to show him. What's your message to the people watching this episode, John? Well, the thing is, uh, if you're going to uh, speed, break the law, uh, it's going to cost you a lot uh, in uh, money and uh, worry and trauma and uh, it just uh, um, Not worth it, right? Just not bloody worth it. Now, John, you're 83 years of age. You've just driven six hours from Melbourne. What have you got on the back of the truck? Oh, right. I've got a fantastic uh, Chev that they used uh, uh, in the desert campaign in 1942, World War II, against Rommel. Uh, the New Zealanders mainly uh, um, uh, were crew, crew on these trucks, and uh, they used to go way out into the desert and uh, then come around behind... Rommel's lines and uh, they'd uh, blow up all his fuel dumps and they'd destroy his aeroplanes and and those guys got the credit for destroying more enemy aircraft than the RAF. John I think it's amazing the stuff that you've got here I mean it's all heavy duty I mean nothing's light here uh, you're messing around with big boys toys and it just doesn't seem to phase you you're about seven stone ring and wet and um, I, I think I think you're amazing. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> I just think that it's great because, I mean, you know, the alternative is that this particular guy here, you could be sitting at home in the lounge chair with a blanket around your knees and whinging, and you're not doing that either, are you? Well, not yet. <laughs> John, Who knows what's around the corner? <laughs> John, it's been a, a, a real pleasure interviewing you, mate, and I, I take my hat off to you. You're, you're an amazing guy, and thanks for turning up and being part of Classic Restos for uh, this special episode of the 2015 Corowa Swim In. Oh, yeah, look, thanks very much. Yeah, you're saying all the nice things. <laughs> I'll yeah. give you the money later. <laughs> Good people deserve nice comments. Thanks, John. <laughs> OK, see you later. Time now for a 1975 Condor. How are you, Mark? Oh, I'm going good, Fletch. Yeah, thanks. That's good, mate. Beautiful bike. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a bit of an interesting, weird and wonderful thing, you know. Uh, weird and wonderful. What's the combination? I see a Ducati engine there. Well, it's uh, produced by a Swiss company exclusively for the Swiss Army. And their, uh, you know, their military spec ideas that they had, they put a Ducati engine in it, uh, BMW headlight, uh, German electrics. Um, it's so, so, so far the combination seems to be stacking up well. I mean, I guess this is a pretty good bike. I think the build quality is wonderful. Um, but I think Switzerland must be flat like the Nullarbor because when you get to a hill it runs out of puff quite quickly. Oh, okay. But it's built for two soldiers. Right. So, you know, me and the wife, off we yep. go. Yep. So it's, uh, it's geared quite tall. Uh, it has a low compression engine, mm -hmm. so it'll run on uh, low grade fuel yeah. and start easily. Some of those octanes, uh, I've found out the other night, a guy was telling me some of those European octanes back a long time ago got down to like 60 and 65 octanes. Um, yeah, that's what I believe, yeah. So, you know, when you're running that sort of fuel, mm. the thing has to start, especially Absolutely. if, you know, there's bullets whizzing around and whatever. So, <laughs> so what can you tell us about the bike or this type of bike uh, used in military service? Well these were basically uh, part of the training aspect of you know the Swiss Army so you know guys would start off on these and then they'd you know lay them down and get behind them with their rifles part of the training and whatever so the mufflers are they're silenced so that you can pot around mm -hmm. um, without detection but yeah, they, they're not, not a heavy duty uh, battle weapon by any means, you know. I just think it's a classy thing. And I mean, obviously, it's the first bike on today's show as well. Um, yeah, well, the only bike. Um, there's not too many of these kicking around either. Well, they built about 3,000 of them right. between 1973 and 1978. Yeah, right. And they were still in service by the Swiss Army until 2001. Mark, thanks for sharing the bike with us. Uh, you've been riding around Coral, no doubt. I mean, well, where did you, where did you ride from to get here? Oh, well, we're um, uh, Wollongong based, yep. but the bike came down on the trailer. Yep. It, it travels faster on the trailer than it does <laughs> on the highway. Uh, so, but we've done about 500 k's uh, putting around. 
So, you know, it's not like it sits still. Yeah, good on you, Mark. So. You, you're keeping the dream alive out on the <laughs> on the, on the the Swiss bike with your yeah. Swiss army knife in your back pocket. Well, that's right. That's yeah. right. The cuckoo clock. That's the one. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. All right, Fletch. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Well, there you go. There's just some of the 2015 military gathering and swim-in here in Corowa, New South Wales. I'm sure you'll agree that Jan Thompson and the KVE team have done a wonderful job yet again. In the meantime, ClassicRestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD box sets of the show, Classic Restos merchandise, contact information on joining us on a Fletch tour, and the major sponsors as well. As I say at the end of every show, no matter where you're watching from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV and watch catch-up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week.